Welcome to the world of ZIP System Building Enclosures, where we believe in striving for optimal air, water, and thermal management, no matter the region or climate. Because when you have the right products to do the right job the right way, the first time, you're building to a higher code, the ZIP Code. I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building in the Kansas City Metro and the Columbia, Missouri market. And today we are at our new Prairie Aero project. And I want to talk to you about this white tube that we have on site and why we have it. Let's do it now. Okay, so the tubing is actually kind of a uh, false lead in this story. We're gonna have more of a philosophical discussion about the, uh, the ERV and the Zender system that we have here on site. Um, and I think the place to start the conversation about an ERV is a little bit of what is an ERV. So I'm sure you've seen us make videos in the past or Reisinger make videos in the past about an energy recovery ventilator. Uh, there's also some that have a heating element installed, but the ERV that we use in our market in climate zone four, uh, our preferred unit is a uh, Zender Comfo Q Air. I have to look over here to make sure I'm gonna say it right because the box is sitting in the corner. And what is an ERV? So enthalpy recovery ventilator, energy recovery ventilator. I think most people just use energy recovery ventilator. What we're trying for is we're trying for whole home ventilation that isn't a detriment to our energy efficiency and isn't a detriment to uh, health or comfort. So we're looking at balanced ventilation. We have a couple different ways that we can do ventilation. Number one is natural leakage. Every building, even really tight ones like this, uh, have some level of natural leakage. Um, the problem is when you get below uh, 3 ACH50, uh, ASHRAE 622 kicks into place and you're supposed to have a certain amount of continuous ventilation or intermittent ventilation, but you have a volume measurement of new air that you're supposed to bring into the building at all times. It ensures freshman, freshness in the air if you're getting turnover um, and, and it ensures that we don't use up all the oxygen and over concentrate the air with CO2 or whatever it may be. Now, it's unlikely that in any home probably that you don't come and go or let the dog out or turn an appliance on that ventilates to the outside. You don't get some turnover, but ASHRAE gives us a standard uh, and we can make another video talking about 62.2 at some point. So we have natural leakage, which, you know, open and closing the doors. I have two dogs and a cat that all go outside at my house. We have a lot of in and out, you know, kids coming and going, neighborhood kids, whatever. That's intermittent and we can't guarantee that, right? We can't guarantee that everybody doesn't come down with the flu and the dogs die and nobody comes and goes for multiple days, right? So what we need is we need ventilation on a schedule to a certain prescribed method or a prescribed amount. So after we know that we need this to the prescribed amount, we have unbalanced or balanced ventilation. Unbalanced ventilation would be, say, a range hood without any makeup air. It's depressurizing the house. There's air leaking in. We don't know where that air is leaking what it's bringing with it. It could have moist air. It could be, um, it could be full of pollen. It could have other allergies in it. It could have any number of things in it, but we don't know. It's outside air and that would be the only thing that we would know, right? So uh, bath fans work the same way. You depressurize the house, that air has to come from somewhere. So you're getting leaking at windows or at doors or at a sill plate or a can light wherever, it's, it's uncontrolled and that's why we don't want it. We want to have total control over the building because the more control we gain, the more health, comfort, and energy efficiency we have. So when we turn on our hood, we want makeup air for that so that there's a cycle of air that comes in to feed the hood that's going out and we don't depressurize the house and cause unwanted leakage. The ERV is the same thing. So in this instance, we're using an ERV to draw from the kitchen, from uh, the bathrooms, and I believe the laundry room. I'd have to double check the plans, but those are the spaces that we're drawing from. So those are our draw, our suck. Our supply back into the house happens in places like the primary bedroom or the living room or the bedrooms at the other end of the house. So we're supplying that new air into the building uh, in separate rooms from what we're drawing from because we don't want to just short circuit the draw. We want to feed into this room new filtered tempered air and we want to draw from the bathroom back there the moist, stinky, damp air that we don't want in the house. So now we have 
air coming out and air going back in at roughly the same rate, there's some reasons to push pull one way or the other. But now we have total control over the air that's getting in or getting out. Now there are some folks that do just supply side uh, ventilation. So they'll take and do a fan that connects to the outside that runs through a filter and into say the air handler on the supply or on the return side. And now you're just bringing air into the house. Uh, there are some problems with that. If we we're gonna put it onto the return side and it's summer and it's, and it's 110 degrees outside, we could be supplying enough hot air in, in theory that we might not cool that coil off enough that then we don't get dehumidification. Um, we also are forcing air into the house when the system's not running. And if we're pressurizing it enough, we might be causing leaks that we don't want. We might be having air leak through uh, a can light that then is drawing, pushing moist air into an environment that's not ready to accept that moisture. We could get condensation issues, things like that. By controlling it with one system, we're in charge of our entrance, our exit, our filtration, and our tempering. Uh, so the core on the ERV, the air doesn't actually mix, but it crosses through thin membranes. And by doing so, it's able to pull some of the humidity off of it and some of the temperature off of it. And while we might have 30 degree air outside and 70 degree air inside, we might be getting 65 degree air out of the ERV supplied into the room. It's not really enough to notice. And that core doesn't take any energy. We're talking about two fans running through some filters in a core. We're not filtering it with... Uh, you know, UV light or any of those sorts of things. It's just an enthalpy core where we're, you know, crossing things close enough that they, steal, that they steal from each other. So we're talking about a balanced ventilation system. The next thing about the Zender system is, well, if you go to the living room, there's 25 boxes of parts that the first time you open them, they're slightly intimidating. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. There's lots of stuff there from this smooth on the inside, corrugated on the outside pipe to these duck boots that are kind of a universal system. They clamp together. There's union pieces for this. There's filters. There's uh, the main unit. There's all this black insulated pipe for uh, entrance and exit air from the building. There's just a lot. All those parts and pieces are something that Zender designs for you. So one of the biggest selling points for me is while we have a mechanical engineer on this specific project, it's Allison Bales with Energy Vanguard. If you're not reading Allison's blog, Energy Vanguard, you should be. Uh, they do a fantastic job. This is multiple houses now that we've worked with them on the uh, mechanical design. We would have to pay them to design all this. So we would be spending the money with an, a mechanical design company to design our ERV system, to size our ductwork, to give us what registers we're supposed to use, and then taking all that to the HVAC uh, install company, and then they have to find all of that, source all of it, bring it to the job and install it. When we work with Zender, we send them our mechanical design minus our ventilation side. We just do the HV, HAC, heating and air conditioning, and then we send that with our building plans to Zender and Zender designs the system as part of our cost. Don't get it wrong, you're paying for that part, you're just paying with the unit now. However, we're paying someone who all they do all day is design this system to work with their parts to design our system instead of a mechanical engineer that might have to do Zender and Panasonic and Braun and all the regular box stuff that you might buy if you're using a, a much more cost effective off the, off the shelf product. So. The design is included, which means our parts and pieces all come in a box and we've yet to have not enough material to make the install happen on any of the projects that we've used the Zenders. So they have that part down. Next, when we start talking about this, the design and even down to CFM from each register is all noted on the plans. It's all prescribed by them. All we have to do is adjust the system. Well, if our HVAC guys were doing this, we'd get whatever comes out of that register. There's very few products that we can actually balance at the, at the distribution point. It's all balancing the unit and then dampers in your ductwork that they would have to create and design. It's all part of the Zender system. We're able to adjust, make adjustments here and we don't have to commission. Zender includes in our purchase price um, the, uh, the commissioning of the system. Now, our HVAC guys are installing. 
Uh, this installer has never done one of these before. But, hammering, sorry, it's an active job site. Our HVAC installer hasn't done one of these before, but they've already figured the majority of it out. I can see most of the boxes have been opened, inspected, and then closed back up. They haven't really had any questions yet. We're going to be here to support them. But I think the system install is very easy. Zinder is going to come and do the commissioning. So while we might have uh, a $15,000 purchase price system you know, shipped to us, that includes design, that includes all the parts and pieces that we need, and that includes the commissioning of the system. If I take a three or $4,000 system as my um, HVAC guys might spec, add duct work, the duct work install time, the commissioning of the system, and the original design of the system done through our HVAC guys, very quickly we start to approach a very comparable price to just buying a Zender in the first place. Now, I will tell you that at my personal house, I had some space concerns and I was worried about cost and I chose to not use a Zender system at my house. Uh, I will be very open and honest and say that that was a mistake because we built a very energy efficient, thick wall, thick insulation, good quality windows, very little air, uh, air leakage, very quiet house. And the only thing in my house besides the clothes dryer that I can hear in the house is the ERV and our ERV runs 24 seven, 365. So when you walk into our very quiet house, the ERV is going and you can hear it. Every time we've installed one of these guys, there's been comments about, is it turned on? Is it running? Did that thing just stop? I can't hear it. There's one of the biggest selling points for me and it has nothing to do with building science. It's low volume, it's considered, and it's not just let's run a fan and dump some air into the space. We have clean, tempered, or we have filtered and tempered air. We have filtered and tempered air coming into the building and we have it in a very quiet and peaceful fashion where if we have to, uh, if we have to boost the system, we might hear it with the boost button in the bathrooms. But otherwise, I haven't, I haven't actually heard one of these units running. And I think that that's a selling point uh, that has nothing to do with building science because we're not just building science builders. We're also trying for auditory comfort inside of our house too, which is funny that I say that on a day where there's so much hammering and saws and everything going on during our video. So I apologize for the noise today, but I do thank you for sticking with me. Uh, stay tuned. We have, um, we're going to do some install stuff with Zender's equipment. We're going to talk about the, the equipment, uh, and then we'll probably come with some uh, commissioning video on how they go about working through these because uh, Gary, uh, the gentleman that's come to balance a couple of ours uh, from the East Coast, is pretty darn knowledgeable. Uh, and I think that he's got a lot to share that's worthy to hear when it comes to their systems and uh, balanced ventilation in general. So balanced ventilation, the Zender systems are worth it. We're using the Comfo Air Q for this house and this house is like 3,700 square feet. So thanks for watching today. Till next time, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter if you're not already. It's two emails a week that send you all the information on all the content that's coming out. It's a great way to not miss anything. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to check out the Unbuild It podcast that Steve Basic, Peter Yost, and myself do. We talk about building and building science. And right now, there's like six or seven episodes in a row of the Build Show Network podcast with Matt and I talking business and the houses that we live in that we built for our families and good advice that we've gotten in the past. So don't forget to check those out too. Until next time, thanks for watching.